okay. Hi, Martin. Hi. Never met you before, but look forward to your talk. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Can't quite see how, I can see how many, uh, oh, I can't see how many participants we've got at the moment. Oh, 17. Thank you for coming to this one. Okay, it's time to start. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Utano, and I'm the room host, and I'm here to provide support for this presentation. I have to make one important announcement before the presentation. Chat is open, but please do not send out any unsolicited links or contact information to individual participants. Throughout the presentation, we will ask you to keep your microphones muted. And please be aware that this presentation will be recorded and possibly shared online. So you may turn off your camera if you don't wish to appear in the video or, and also be aware that your name will be shown too. So you can rename if you, if you wish now. And if you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them in the meeting chat area so that the presenter can answer the present after the presentation. So thank you for joining us today. And please welcome Martin, who will be presenting providing feedback for written English, a summary of preferred methods. So Martin, you can begin now. Thank you very much, Utano san. Uh, and as, uh, as uh, Utano san said, then this presentation is about uh, feedback for uh, written English and the summary of uh, different methods of feedback and those preferred by students. So in any skill, uh, feedback is considered uh, a very powerful tool. Uh, and um, it's been referred to as the lifeblood of learning. It's also been said that it's one of the most effective methods of leading learners to improved and desired performances. And feedback can also significantly affect uh, the self-belief of students and also future uh, perspectives on the, on education. So it is uh, a very uh, powerful tool. And so what is uh, feedback? So there are many pockets of feedback and two of the main pockets, uh, summative feedback, which is a summary of assessment of student performance on a task or activity. And that's provided at the end of the course, normally in the form of a, a score or a grade. Whereas formative feedback is information which is communicated uh, to a learner for improving performance on activities or tasks. And that's usually provi uh, provided prior to the final completion. Uh, so for us, as if we're writing instructors, then the formative feedback is the one that we're most concerned about, where we can actually uh, help the students and assist the students to uh, a performance, uh, a better performance on, a, on an activity or task. So despite being a, a very powerful tool in, uh, in education and in writing, um, especially for writing, I think instructors and learners sometimes have uh, quite negative uh, perspectives of uh, feedback. Uh, some of the perspectives for instructors, uh, and maybe you can empathize with some of these, uh, it can be a very time consuming and energy consuming activity. 
And it can be somewhat demotivating too when you keep seeing the same errors coming back. Uh, if you've got a lot of um, learners in your class, then the activity of giving feedback can almost seem endless and often a monotonous task, which is very uninteresting. And, and I think instructors can also be asking themselves, well, is it worth it? Is it really worth all this effort? And are the students are reading any of this? So from the learner's perspective, uh, it can also be uh, a negative, um, some of the negative perspectives could be that it, feedback is considered a barrier to the eventual goal. And it all, it's all also a highlight uh, and maybe even confirming some of the insufficient skills or abilities that students have. Students as well might see this as a time consuming exercise where they have to go through uh, all of the feedback uh, and they don't see how it relates to uh, an improved performance outside of that task or even that course. So the context that I'm teaching, I've been teaching uh, writing courses for quite some time and I've taken some more formal um, uh, questionnaires uh, for the past two or three years. And there's always, uh, in each of those uh, classes, there are about 20 to 24 students, they're first year students. And the main goal of this class is to improve the uh, academic writing abilities. And usually the length of the, um, of the papers are somewhere between 500 to 1200 words. So these students, I asked these students, well, what do you feel about the feedback that I'm giving? And um, I asked them, well, do you think you, you're gaining more understanding and knowledge of the tasks of writing through uh, either uh, the instruction I give before the tasks or from the feedback that I'm giving? And in both of the years that I took the survey, the formal, uh, formal survey, then the students overwhelmingly thought that they got more from uh, feedback. So the types of methods that I am employ of feedback um, uh, include uh, codes and symbols, uh, written comments, one-to-one -one conferences with the instructor, audio recordings, rubric, whiteboard, and peer feedback. Now we've got limited time, so I'm only concentrating on these three, which is the written comments, the one-to-one -one conferences with the instructor, and audio recordings. <clears throat> So written comments first, uh, I think this is the default that we as writing instructors uh, go to when we're uh, correcting uh, students or learners papers. Uh, and the positives of that, the advantages of that is that it's easy for students to see where their errors are and that it's easy to see where we want them to correct. It's also a very easy method to transfer. For me, I write on the student's paper and then give it back to them. Uh, and it really requires no, uh, no technology uh, or, or very little knowledge of technology. But the biggest disadvantage of these written comments, as you might've seen from uh, the different times that it, it takes, that the, the written comments is actually the most time consuming method. Uh, and it often involves giving up or sacrificing weekends and, and looking for time when you can, uh, you have the time to, uh, to go through these papers. And for me, it requires uh, me to really concentrate and be careful of my handwriting too. So when I make the comments, I, I include positive feedback, uh, positive feedback about what the students uh, did well in which areas. And then when I find uh, I want to correct mistakes, then I have three choices. Uh, I can indicate the error uh, and then help the students try and understand where they, how to correct that error in the form of information through a written comment or code. Uh, and that would be through some kind of cue. The second option I have is to give feedback uh, just by indicating the error and then let the student try work out or figure out how to correct it by themselves. The third option I have is, to, um, is just to give the answer. So I was concerned, well, what do the students prefer and which of those methods do they like? 
So the majority of students wanted me to indicate the error <clears throat> and give them some help how to, um, how to correct that error. Uh, a significant uh, proportion of students also just wanted me to indicate the error and they would figure that out themselves. Uh, a lower proportion or smaller proportion of students uh, just wanted the answer in these, uh, for these two years. <clears throat> so some considerations when I'm doing written comments um, or symbols and chords is first I think, well, before I put pen to paper, what do I want to achieve by these comments? What is the purpose I'm writing this comment? I also consider, well, what quantity do I need to do? Do I need to correct everything or do I need to, be, to focus on one, uh, on one particular item? I also have to be, as I said, I have to be conscious of my writing uh, and I also give, up for, uh, I give follow up tasks. So the second of these was one to one conferences with an instructor. Uh, and this has been, for me, it's proved a very efficient method, method. I can transfer a lot of information in a very short amount of time, but it's also a, com a communication. So it's a two-way method. And I can confirm if the students are understanding what, I, uh, what I'm saying or, and what parts they need to correct. Uh, students in comments have often said that they like this uh, type or they prefer this type because uh, it allows them to employ uh, com communication skills as well. Now, for me, the biggest advantage of this is the, that it develops a rapport between instructor and student. And I can understand more in, in that short time of conference uh, of the students' motivations or problems and even things that I can fix uh, within my control. So I, that, I think that is the, the uh, biggest advantage of these one-to-one -one conferences. Um, some of the disadvantages is that it needs time and space. Uh, and I have to be very careful that the students, this, how the students are reacting and also that they're comprehending what I'm trying to communicate. So some considerations uh, for one-to-one -one conferences. Again, what do I hope to achieve when I'm uh, having a conference with them? I also need to be conscious of the time because of, there are a lot of uh, other students in the class that I need to do conferences with. I need to be thoughtful about the location so that it's private for the student that they can communicate freely. Uh, I have to be also thinking about what the other students are doing if I'm doing this in class time. So do they have activities which it can occupy their time while I'm doing these uh, the one-to-one -one conferences? It also requires uh, some preparation, both from the instructor and the student. So I always ask the students to come with at least two questions, even if they're just about word choice mistakes or word choice uh, considerations. For me, I look back at the student's essay so I know who I'm talking to and the content of the essay. And the students seem to appreciate that I remember, uh, remembered their essay. And also it's wise to give up some uh, a follow-up activity. Uh, after the one-to-one -one conference. Uh, now, this is a, a technique I haven't seen other instructors doing, uh, and it's a way to transfer a lot of information um, without me having to write, uh, write a lot of comments. So it's a very efficient system. And I record the information uh, about the essays onto a device, either a, a smartphone or a tablet. It's very easy to transfer. Uh, and the students have commented that they like this because they can, they can listen to it several times uh, in place of the one-to-one -one conferences, which is just there and then. Uh, and the students have also commented that they like this type of method because it, it's uh, improving their listening skills on a topic that they're invested in and pro probably they spent a lot of time on. So they like that engagement that we're talking about, something that, they, uh, that they've invested their time with. Some of the uh, negatives of this method are I have to be careful of hesitation sounds, which can sound like white noise for, for students on the recording. 
I also need to prepare. So it does take some time to prepare what I'm going to say to try avoid those hesitation sounds. But actually this for me has been a positive um, because I reflect more on what I'm going to tell the student uh, and I remember better their essay. So before I press the record button, I'm already re reflecting on the student's, uh, student's paper. Uh, there might be issues of comprehension depending on the level. So how did I, I do this? Well, it, on all devices, on smartphones, um, then they have either a voice recorder, a dictaphone, so it's a voice recorder or, uh, or voice memo. And the students have this function as well. Um, and then, so I finish my recording and when I go to send this, then I can send it. Uh, I, I found that a lot of the students have app, uh, Apple devices uh, and that's very easy to uh, transfer using uh, Apple's airdrop system. Um, so you can find this on the setting system of airdrop. Uh, and then I ask the students when I see the students in the classroom or before the class uh, to turn on their airdrop and the recording I have, I can send to, to their device very quickly within uh, 10 seconds. So the, the airdrop system is very good. If you don't, if the students have uh, an Android phone, then I type in the student's email, preferred email address myself, or get the students to type it onto my device and it's uh, to their, their own device within uh, 10 seconds. So some considerations uh, for this. Again, I have to consider the uh, purpose. Why, what do I hope to achieve by doing this? I have to be clear and think about the language I'm using, grading the language and speaking clearly. Uh, it does need some preparation time, although that can, be, that can also be a positive, um, but it's a lot less preparation time or takes a lot less time than it would for the written comments. I have to be careful that it's compatible with where the students are looking on the paper. So when they're looking on their paper, I can write uh, comment one, uh, audio comment one, or audio comment two throughout their paper. So the, the, the student or learner can refer back to their, their place where I'm talking about. And it also uh, is useful to give some uh, follow-up activity. Yeah, so what, how did the students perceive these different methods? So through three years, I asked them, well, what do you think about these, these seven methods of feedback? Uh, and in all three years, they want, the students preferred the one-to-one -one feedback the most. Uh, and either the audio recording, second or third most preferred, or thought to be third most useful, sorry, uh, and the written comments were uh, second or third. So these three uh, are, are, are considered very useful uh, by, the, uh, by the students. Uh, the least preferred, if you want to know from those seven, uh, it was uh, peer feedback in two of the years and the whiteboard in uh, last year. So I asked the students to evaluate, well, what do you, uh, how do you evaluate these uh, different methods? Uh, and from uh, the three years that I took the, the kind of formal survey, then again, uh, leading the highest accredited values of four and five on a Likert scale were for the instructor, uh, the audio recording and the written comments. So a summary of what I'm, uh, I've talked about in this presentation, one-to-one uh, -one consultations, written comments and audio comments are most preferred or thought to be most useful by students. Uh, the audio feedback, uh, which I haven't seen other instructors do, can be a very useful and easy way, efficient way to save time, to transfer a lot of information. Uh, and it encouraged me to, or uh, encourage the instructor to reflect more on the student's work before they start recording. Um, when I give any type of feedback, then I ask myself, well, what do I hope to achieve by this feedback? So I understand, try to understand the purpose of giving the feedback for written comment, for uh, written work. And then I always have follow-up activities. Um, students have often prefer having the chance to self-correct or the students that I was teaching uh, preferred to have a chance to self-correct rather than just giving uh, an answer. So the 
these are resources that I've, uh, or resources that I found very useful. But the top one there is a book, uh, Highland and Highland. That's uh, the, one of the newest um, uh, resources. Uh, and also Jones and Tang, which was shout uh, last year, they did something in the language teacher, which also looked at the teacher perspectives as well. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, or if you want to these slides, then I can send them, uh, you can use uh, this address here. So I, I can now take any questions, or even if you have comments, I'll be happy to hear them. Uh, Martin, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you for a great presentation. I really was interested to hear about what your students felt was useful in terms of feedback for them. And that reflects a lot of my suspicions about what students like to see when it comes to, to feedback. I haven't used the audio recording method myself yet, but I do know some colleagues who have used audio recordings to give feedback about student audio recordings for conversation practice or that kind of thing. And they seem to um, really like those. Um, one thing that we use at our campus, uh, we have the Microsoft Office Suite and we use um, stream videos. And stream videos have a, an option where you can have it auto-generate captions. And it's getting very good. Uh, and in the future, I wonder if for audio recordings, that might be something that would also be very useful for students. You could have the audio and also an auto-generated caption that students could read along with. Um, so that's just a suggestion of something to keep track of or check into. Yeah. yeah. I, I've seen the, the methods, uh, some uh, forums where you can, uh, give feedback on um, where you're on this, where you're recording and this, you're looking at the students' uh, work on screen. And I've tried mm -hmm. that re using Word and then uploading it to a forum. Uh, for me, that was that work that was okay, but it just took a long time mm -hmm. to upload. Mm -hmm. So the time I saved from not writing feet, writing the comments, uh, written comments, was then offset that I had to do a lot wait around a lot more for it up to upload somewhere and it was very frustrating so the audio recordings i've i've, I've asked I've, I've done that as well when i compared the visual with just the audio recordings i didn't find any difference in uh how the students react to that mm -hmm. um it just was a lot more painful to start uploading everything if you've got a very good wi-fi connection something it might help but that's a lot of data when you're doing something visual and that's why it took a long time whereas the audio recordings you can just send it by email and it doesn't have any problem because it's just the audio and it, it's very short mm. yeah that makes a lot of sense um since all our students are also hooked into the microsoft suite then we don't maybe have as many um date like data transfer issues um, because everybody's using the same platform. Um, but yeah, still videos can take a little bit of time for sure. Yeah. Hi, Martin. Um, yeah. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I have a question. Have you done any research um, on, so that's their, um, uh, their preferred method was the audio, uh, the face-to-face -face actually one-to-one uh, -one, um, feedback, but have you done a follow-up on how effective or like if they've had uh, any improvement based on the type of uh, feedback yeah. you've given them yeah i um, mean that's that's kind of the next challenge there's a lot of i'm trying to find that gap because there's other other researchers have done effectiveness of it so mm -hmm. for me um and those resources that i put there at the end i'll, I'll show them again that there's a lot of they've done uh, more work on the effectiveness of it which is very mm -hmm. I, I agree it's very important uh, and I, the follow-up tasks that I'm doing, the auditory ones, where they have to, um, they give me a summary of, of four or five points what I said at the time mm -hmm. so in the one-to-one -one conferences or the or the audio recording. So they summarize it themselves. That's another writing task that they have to do. I see. Um, yeah. 
And then they've got the, the uh, written comments where they send me their, um, I do them in drafts. So they send me their drafts, the, the mm -hmm. draft. And then I, then they circle where they've, where they've corrected. So then if they yeah, so it and, then I, that. and I look at it and I say, no, you haven't corrected it. It's the same mistake. So <laughs> you circled it, but you haven't done anything. Isn't that frustrating sometimes when you, yeah, yeah, yeah it's very the same thing. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. That, that's the thing when you're doing the one to one, one to one feedback, then they mm -hmm. say, I circle this, and you go, Well, you circled it, but you didn't change it. <laughs> so, um, right, the effectiveness for me it's the engaging with if they're going to engage with that feedback, mm -hmm. they're gonna, mm -hmm. they're probably gonna have more, uh, to try change it somewhere to correct it, to correct to themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, the engagement for me is, is very important, and that's why I'm saying about most preferred. Yes, okay, thank you. Thanks. Tano San, how long do we have left? Oh, I had something in the chat, didn't we? I'm sorry. Paul, can I make a comment? Uh, yep, yeah, sorry, Lorna. Yeah. I'm Lorna. And yeah. Thank you very much, Martin, for your presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, something that I've been finding a difficulty for my writing classes is that. Um, when I do these one-to-one -one with a student, I end up spending um, more time with the students that are really poor, doing poorly. And I feel like that is not fair to the students who are following directions, who are making the corrections as I send them out to them, who are finishing the um, assignment quickly. And I, and I get frustrated because I'm focusing on the students that are unmotivated actually in the class. Could you comment on this? Yeah, for me, it's um, that that audio feedback as well. It, it's part of motivation. If the students are, are, are more motivated or what, I think that's somewhat of a different topic. But um, giving them the opportunity to look at the feedback, and I think positive, adding both positive and uh, and uh, identifying the errors, both of those is important as well. So they do actually get something. They don't feel it's just criticism. But they do actually feel, oh, well, I did this well and this well. So um, giving the audio feedback as well uh, also helped. But I understand that what you're saying is that you're spending, I think if the students are doing well and they're almost kind of accomplished the task, <laughs> then do they really need more time, more time for those one-to-one -one conferences? So the ones who are not doing well, well why are, and, and again, why are they not doing well? What, what's demotivating them in that one-to-one -one conference? I can find out a lot more about it then. So I'm not so worried about giving more time to those who are not completing the tasks, to be honest. Because <laughs> the ones who are doing it, well, great, you're doing it, great, fantastic. So you can, you, you're completing the task, but so I, I'll try to help more those who can't, who can't achieve the task. Thank you. I guess I just have a, a wider gap in my class. I have some students that always finish the writing task within, you know, within one or two classes. They're just, they just don't have very many errors and, or, or their writing is very, very, you know, good. And then I have the other spectrum where if I told, I'd need to practically tell them what to write on their paper for every line because it's, they, they don't even know what a thesis is or anything like that. So anyway, um, I, I will try this audio though. I think that might work with some of the students. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah. for that. Well, for me, it's just that time consuming concept that it really it just yeah. reduces the amount of written comments I have to make. Yeah. I, I actually have my students use um, machine um, you know, help machine translation, help with gra Grammarly and stuff. I tell them I won't correct your small little mistakes, small little grammar and spelling. I refuse to correct. You can use a, a translation machine for that, but I will, I want to deal with the content issues, you know, and organization with you. So uh, that's well, what I yeah, Me too. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, well, good luck with that, uh, Lorna. <laughs> I think it's the same for everyone. Yes, yeah, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Good luck. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. Yeah, and let's you. let's offer a round of applause for Martin who presented today. Oh, thank you. And